Okay, this will be our project for today. Ashley's 2216. Tied in hand. And the feed will be given away if you are my coffee shop supporter. So you'll find the instructions there. So visit my coffee shop if you're interested in the feed. Let's start. Okay, hello there. Today we are taking a look at something that's called knob coverings. If you need uh, to cover some kind of round object like a tool end or, or simply cork or bottle or, or whatever, maybe making a key fob, nice round ball. So uh, you'll find the instructions in many many books. And the one uh, we are taking a look today is in Ashley's number 216. Uh, but we're doing it in a different kind of method that uh, is described in Ashley's. But let's take a closer look. Okay, so here's the first one I ever made. That's uh, in a bell rope that works as a door knocker. So that's four bytes on each end. And four passes. Looks good. So. Let's take a look. You find it naturally under the chapter twenty nine a monkey's fist and other coverings. And that we'll be taking a look at this one. Two two one six. Now you find these instructions, as said in many books, very good ones you'll find in, in Lindsay's book, also in Knob Nuts. If you want to try it with this method. But we are taking a look at a different kind of method today. This is uh, what I made at first, but I find it very difficult to follow these instructions and, and it includes all kinds of cardboards and uh, needles and, and everything. So we'll take a look at another version on how to make, make this kind of knot. So I found a much easier way to tie the knot in Nothing Matters from 97 in C55 and uh, it's described by Tom Hall I believe he has a video in his YouTube channel about the knot tied uh, around a mandrel but since I like to use the tie around my fingers I'll show you how, how I do it. Visit Tom's channel if you are interested in Turks Knots and, and everything. There's everything you need to know. I'll put the link in the description below. Now you could of course use a Turk's head to cover a round object. The difference is that uh, with a Turk's head you shouldn't be using more than with four bytes. It should, shouldn't have more than four sides or three sides 
in order to close the covering. With 6 byte Turks head you leave a small opening so it doesn't cover completely. And also with Turks head with round objects it easily leaves gaps in the middle. So you need more body in the middle than in the ends. And with these coverings there are only four parts in the ends. In this case six in the other rod. And crossings are always four or three sides. And you have more parts in the middle so it covers the round in the middle. But let's say we have a small feed and want to make a covering in the end. So I have some two and a half mil cord here. And since the knot uh, is uh, five part knot, you can measure roughly one, two, three, four, five plus some. So that's enough for one pass. And uh, I think we'll maybe doing three passes on this one. Okay, you don't need a needle, but it can be handy. So, okay, we'll be making this quite big so you, it's easier to see. Start on the right, back, over to the left, then you go over to the right. over to the left. Then over to the right and back. And now we are beginning to weave everything together. So here you have two overs, two unders. So we're going over this one and out under that one to get them together. Turn to the right, and here we have over two, under two, so we are picking up the bite there.
Okay, now comes the difficult part. We'll be picking up this byte. We'll be weaving everything right there. This byte and that byte. And keep everything in order. So we have four strands here. Take the middle ones, pass them left over right, to get the over under pattern again. Then take the left one, pass it over, or the right one to pass over left one, the left one under right one. And those are in the middle. And pass them over under. And now you see the over under pattern everywhere here. And now we take and weave these together. Over, uh, under, over, under, over. And then we're coming back to a standing end. And that completes our knot. Further knot a bit. And you see we have four bytes at the ends. and also four bytes in the middle. And that's basically it. Then we are taking our object, fairing a bit around. I usually make two passes first and then fair up the knot before the third pass. And you need to be very careful not to tighten too much. Okay, then you put your covering on the knob. And fair, fair it up. So. Careful to tighten not too much. Easily tighten this knot. Much too much. Then it gets crowded and it's almost impossible to back it up. You 
should actually never back up slack in the knots. So, and then for the third pass. the ends well hidden there and then you start the slow process bing and then you start the slow process of tightening up the knot and I said be careful not to tighten too much do it in three or four very soft passes and it'll be fine. When you're tightening, try to keep the openings at the same size. Look at the openings, not the cordage itself. Okay, now it looks like there's still a few gaps here. So it should be enough for a fourth pass, actually. But I'm thinking about filling it with a different color of cordage. This is a bit smaller cordage, so I'll be stitching that in. Now I never start at the same point where the actual knot is started. I start from somewhere else. So the ends won't meet in the same place.
Okay, that filled the gaps nicely. So I just trim the ends and treat with Sherlock. Ashley is 2216, tied in hand, and the feed will be given away if you are my coffee shop supporter, so you'll find the instructions there. So visit my coffee shop if you are interested in the feed.